Before I start the video, I just want to give a quick shout out to the Brutal Raids YouTube channel. It's the new OneHive uh, YouTube channel, and it's kind of a continuation of OneHive Raids that Jake used to have uh, for a while. It's a different channel. Uh, it's Brutal Raids, a lot smaller, but it has a lot of the same series that Jake did. Uh, the guy that runs it seems like a fun guy to listen to, so I definitely encourage you to check out the channel uh, if you're interested. And even if you're not, you can still see my base being attacked, actually, if you watch the uh, last Ninja Live. That's another series this guy does uh, that Jake used to do, the Ninja Live series. If you look at the most recent one, you can see my base being attacked live in this war we had against One Hive. So I encourage you guys to check them out. Link is in the description. And that being said, hope you guys like the recap. Hey guys, what's up? I Sec the Tron here from One Hive Gazette. Here with the next war recap video. This is the one that you guys have been waiting for uh, against One Hive, uh, our old family clan. And uh, we were really hoping to get the win here. Uh, I mean, there's not any hard feelings. I, I wouldn't say that. Uh, you know, since the split, I think people have kind of been like, all right, it's a game. We'll, we'll play how we want to play. Uh, you can play how you want to play. Uh, not a whole lot of animosity or anything like that. But, um, Still, we want to win. You know, it's part of the CWL. It's against a clan that um, we do have a history with, whether or not we've moved past it. And uh, I think that, you know, it was a disappointing loss, definitely, especially with uh, down six stars. And they didn't even use two of their attacks. Uh, one of their Town Hall 9s didn't end up using either of his attacks. So uh, good job to them. They got the win. They did what needed to be done uh, to do so. And uh, they had, I think, a pretty good plan. Got a lot of our bases taken out. You can just see as we go through. Um, got the 11s taken care of. I think our 11, 11 base building could have been a little bit better or, I guess, compared to theirs, um, their 11s definitely had trickier bases than ours. Um, not Nothing against our Town Hall 11s. I don't want to sound like I'm criticizing because I'm not. Uh, but just uh, they had some great bases, uh, especially their 2 and 3. Very difficult to 2 star. Um, but yeah, they got the 2 stars up top and then they uh, were able to 3 star quite a few of our Town Hall 10s uh, here. You can see most of these are their 11s dipping down. Uh, but I think they did have, yeah, they had, I think, two Town Hall 10 3 stars, which these days is a lot. Um, we we didn't have any, and I'll get to that, what we did in a second, but they got the 9s cleaned with, I think, just a few dip attacks. Same with us. We used a few dip attacks as well. Town Hall 9 is surprisingly tricky. Um, maybe it's just in the bubble I'm in, but now that we've faced two different clans in CWL, uh, we've seen both times, both clans, dipping down to uh, with their Town Hall 10s to 3-star the remaining Town Hall 9s. So I don't think it's just kind of, I'm in a bubble here, but I could be wrong, I guess. Um, got one 2-star on the 11s. We'll take a look at my attack in a bit. Um, other two 11s, like I said, very tricky. Tough to, uh, to get the 2-star. And then as we kind of work our way down, just left too many Town Hall 10s on the board. Uh, the main star differential was these two bases, obviously. And then uh, we didn't, weren't able to three star as many Town Hall 10s as we would have liked to. Uh, would have been better if we had a few more of those dip attacks, Town Hall 11 versus Town Hall 10, a few more of those going for three stars. Uh, but also, uh, we didn't have any Town Hall 10 versus Town Hall 10 three stars, like I said. Um, I'm partly responsible. I had a failed attack, which was pretty bad. Um, even on these very low level bases, which had level one Infernos and stuff, still struggle. And uh, as I said, the Town Hall 9s got the job done for the most part, just a few dip attacks. So I think, you know, our, we're going to regroup our Town Hall 11s, Town Hall 10s, have to work on a few things, but we're, you know, it's a journey. We're, we're at the beginning of this league, and I think we have a lot of room for improvement and uh, a, lot, a lot of stuff we can do to get better. But I, you know, it's going to be fun. I think we had a fun war, even though it didn't end how we would have wanted it to. So let's take a look at a few attacks, starting with my own attack on base number one. Um, really because it's the only Town Hall 10 versus Town Hall 11 two star. Wanted to show at least one of these. So we'll go ahead and fast forward to the start here. Um, basically, it's dropping down a giant and a wizard, create the funnel on that army camp. Uh, that wizard's kind of important because I want to make sure that the queen doesn't walk down towards uh, towards the right side at 3 o'clock outside of the base. I want her to actually go inside and get in there, get the eagle and stuff. So it's a pretty big push, and that's all max point defense. Plus, I do lose one of the healers. I should have dropped in a balloon. Um, that's a Especially in these Town Hall 11 bases, they seem to know you're going to do a queen walk or something or use baby dragons because they put their... 
Seeking air mines, which is smart, towards the outside of the base to catch some of those uh, air troops that you might have. So right away I lose one of my healers, but luckily I still have four more because I brought five total. Uh, just raging her up as I go. Uh, right there, she'll get in there, engage the king, have a poison for him. Uh, to slow him down. She'll take out the king, take out the archer tower, then step up. Luckily, the air defenses don't take out any of my healers, um, so the queen's able to get the job done. Then I starting with a golem down here and a wizard just to create the funnel for the bowlers. A few bowlers uh, to take out the... Uh, um, the gold mine, some of the stuff uh, on the right side of the base, then come in with the main push of the king and the max bowlers in the CC, uh, drop a rage down as well. I wasn't sure if I was going to use that rage or not. Decided to use it there instead of on my Valks, which I think was a good decision. I got some good value there. Uh, the queen kind of made her way through the wall. The eagle is still up. She never ended up taking that out. So that is something we have to deal with, especially because it's locked onto the Valks. A giant bomb goes off, so they're taking quite a bit of damage, but they're just kind of able to... Uh, Make their way around. The healers do peel off onto the Valks, which I think keeps them up long enough to get in there, engage that town hall. Plus, the queen pops her ability. Uh, she'll take out that town hall along with the Valks. They'll actually get through that wall, take out the defensive queen, and get a few more buildings. Uh, plus, my queen will get a few more buildings. And then I do have a few archers, um, which I try to drop. Not a whole lot of you know, places to drop them, but I do try to get a few archers down. Um, Go ahead and fast forward right here. A few archers go down, but not a whole lot of places to put the rest of my troops. So that's it, 59%. Pretty solid for a two-star. Um, so I'll definitely take it. And uh, was was good to get at least one uh, successful attack because uh, my first one went, went pretty bad. Wasn't in the fails because it was actually too bad to even use as an example. Um, but anyway, uh, next attack here is Captain Cold. One to show, uh, you know, a dip attack because it's worth showing at this point in the game. We're seeing, you know, Town Hall 11 still have some trouble, uh, but the witches seem to be the new thing. The witches plus the bowlers. Those two troops combined is what is able to... Uh, to get the job done on most Town Hall 10 bases. Not all of them, but um, you can see how wide he dropped them. Now, a few witches, or actually more than a few, quite a few witches, uh, go to the outside of the base, but sometimes that's okay. Uh, sometimes you can still get some decent value for them. They'll kind of help clean up the outside of the base. Uh, those witches at the bottom, I think they get that mortar taken out in time, and they continue on their way. So that actually ends up working okay in some circumstances. The important thing is all the heroes go into the base. Uh, he has the warden's ability, has a bunch of bowlers in the middle. I think the queen steps up, takes out the uh, inferno, and then from there, it's just about using whatever you have left to get the rest of the base taken out. That's where witches are so powerful, because they keep spawning spawning those skeletons. If you have a group of them left up, uh, they can do some serious damage to a base, especially once the infernos are down. Uh, so you can see he'll just kind of make his way through on each side. The witches do kind of peter out on the right side, but on the left, he has that group of like four of them that ended up walking, which turned out to be okay. Um, sorry about that. You can see the uh, all the three of the heroes are actually still up in one form or another. So we'll go ahead and fast forward to the end here just for sake of time. Uh, gets the job done. Nice attack to this Captain Cold. Uh, these dip attacks are very important. And uh, if it was a 100% success rate, we might have won this war, to be honest, because both clans, I think, did struggle with dipping down. Town Hall 10 uh, bases can be tough, even for Town Hall 11s. So let's take a look at our next one. And uh, it is, is a Town Hall 9 attack. You know, it sucks, guys, that I can't show Town Hall 10 versus Town Hall 10 three stars. I know a lot of you guys are Town Hall 10s trying to learn the strategies, and I'd, you know, I'd love to be able to, to, to go through an attack, talk about it, you know, this is why it worked, show it in a recap or in an attack strategy or something. But right now, it's just not happening for Genesis. Um, we've been kind of at a, a dry spell as far as Town Hall 10 v Town Hall 10 three stars. I think we'll figure it out. I mean, we've, we're having a lot of close stuff. It, it's just bound to, uh, to have a breakthrough. You know, maybe one strategy will become more powerful than the others. We'll start to see it more. I don't know. I, th I think that... Um, you know, Town Hall 10, because of that minor nerf, and I'm not complaining. I think it was, for the most part, a good thing. Might have been a little bit too uh, too tough on miners because I haven't seen them at all pretty much in the last few wars, just very, very occasionally. Um, especially at Town Hall 10 versus Town Hall 10, you don't see many miners. But 
Um, that that nerf did make it so it's kind of difficult to three star bases, especially high level town hall tens. But no excuse for not getting those uh, low level town hall tens. They got our low level town hall tens. We probably should have got theirs. Um, but yeah, like I said, whenever we start getting it figured out, you'll you'll be sure to see those on the channel. So just uh, not much I can do. I apologize, but. Uh, that's kind of where we're at right now. But anyway, we have some awesome Town Hall 9 attacks to take a look at. Uh, Nate, nice queen uh, kind of charge. You can see this base is a little bit more spread out. I talked in the last video, the fails video, how about compact bases can be tough for this strategy. But if you have a spread out base where your troops can kind of roam around, but not too spread out, you want it compact enough that your troops will stay together. So it's kind of in the middle there. If you can get that uh, situation, your troops will be able to kind of make their way through the base without too many impediments, but also uh, stay in a group so the healers can heal them up all at once under those rages. He has lost quite a few healers, but even one healer under rage, especially when there's points in time like this where they're away from all the defenses, uh, that makes a huge difference. So uh, the queen is still up, still has pretty much all his troops left up, to be honest. Uh, nothing major has even died yet. Uh, so we even go times two here because it's just a few defenses left up on this base. Uh, this strategy can be very, very powerful sometimes uh, on, on the right base when it's used properly. So definitely a nice attack by Nate. Um, we have some actually some very cool Town Hall 9 attacks to take a look at. Some using the uh, new skeleton spell, which is uh, something that we haven't seen in a while. And uh, after the update, it's something that uh, we're seeing a lot more. Uh, first, we have Tornado Top Hat uh, just doing kind of an old fashioned to a certain extent. Uh, Queen Walk, two golems. I think he has some bowlers in the CC, uh, but a very nice clinical attack here. Drops down the queen a little off to the left. That's how you want to do it when it's close. Just drop her on the corner a little off to the side you want her to go. Drop something to take out the buildings on the other side. That baby dragon actually helps with the defensive queen. Gets her pretty low. Actually takes her out. Yeah, I didn't even know that. Takes her out completely. Then gets a few more buildings while it's at it. So good, good job by that baby dragon. Awesome value there. Uh, right here is the hog for the sea sealer. Now it is a lava hound. Not the biggest deal in the world. Typically what you want to do is drop a wizard to help your queen take it out. That extra damage will help speed her up and it'll also help take out the pups if it's still alive. Uh, but that one hog, because no defenses can target it, it takes out that entire, I think that was an air defense, then goes over here and starts working on the that expo because all that's targeting it is just that little uh, lava hound because the expo is locked onto the queen and no other defenses are in range. So almost gets that expo taken out, doesn't quite get it. Uh, comes in on the right side here with the golems, the king, the bowlers awesome funnel everything's good here uh, everything's moving into the base right there the queen engages the lava hound i don't think he drops a wizard that would have helped but he's probably busy with the other side of the attack dropping the rage and stuff over there um, but everything moving through has two heals for his hogs uh, start sending those guys in right here and uh, the king is going to be a little bit of an issue because he is on a few hogs, but I think he peels off onto a golemite or something, which definitely helps. Um, one thing that the uh, the one hive clan did, which was actually pretty effective in most attacks, not this one, but in most attacks, is that little Tesla farm um, kind of on the outside of the base by the town hall or other buildings that can kind of protect it. This one's a little bit more exposed, but a lot of the time they put it um, in some kind of inlet in the base. So it was technically on the outside of the base, but it was pretty protected by storages and the town hall and stuff. And it really did a number on our hogs um, on certain attacks. So that's something that's pretty effective, especially if you keep it away from your queen. Uh, if the hogs have to engage it with a few spring traps, that can be pretty dangerous for hogs. Good way to kill them uh, in, the, uh, in the point in time where Town Hall 9 is, where hogs are becoming used a little bit more than they were in the past. So anyway, uh, Tornado Top Hat does a good job overcoming that, getting the three star. Um, two more attacks to take a look at. <clears throat> uh, we have Rich, and this was a nice attack, and I've been waiting to see this. I think other YouTubers may have shown this. Uh, it's something that uh, it really redefines what you can do with air attacks at Town Hall 9, um, maybe even Town Hall 10, but especially Town Hall 9. Uh, with the flexibility you have to be creative. Basically, you can see he'll come in here with the kill squad, um, pretty normal stuff, uh, has I think one golem, his king and his queen, not a whole lot, just enough to get in there, and I think get one, yeah, just pretty much one air defense and the CC troops, so a very small investment for a relatively small uh, value of the base taken out. 
The queen, a little bit dangerous there that she could have targeted that DE storage, but she comes back inside the base, and uh, that's pretty much it. He's just trying to get that one air defense. Doesn't even bring a jump or anything for that second air defense because it's so exposed. He can get it pretty easily with his first Lava Hound and a few balloons. Uh, so there's the CC troops. Uh, goes ahead and uses that king's ability early because he knows he's going to be taking quite a bit of damage. Wants to get the full value of all the damage he can do with his ability. Uh, but right here, uh, comes in with the first Lava Hound straight across the base. Uh, has the uh, balloons for the Tesla farm, gets that taken care of right away. This might have been a cleanup attack because it looked pretty well timed. I'm not sure, but yeah, that might have been, maybe not. Uh, but anyway, that uh, next Lava Hound is on the air defense doing some tanking. That's the max Lava Hound, so it's going to be up for quite a while. <clears throat> the balloon pathing isn't ideal. They kind of bounce around for a while, so the Lava Hound ends up taking quite a bit of damage. I think the Lava Hound actually took out the air defense on its own just by virtue of the damage it does. Uh, because it had already taken, actually, I don't know. I'm not sure that happened. I wasn't paying that much attention. But anyway, that last Lava Hound is over there. And look, the Queen is still up. He never took out the Queen, but he has the Skeleton Spell for the Queen. So right here, the Balloons take out that last air defense. Uh, he has a few back-end Balloons. At this point, the Queen would probably be wrecking his attack by taking out these Balloons one by one. But boom, there goes the Skeleton Spell. Uh, there's not a whole lot to take out those Skeletons. The, uh, the Cannons are, you know... I guess in the area, but you know, they're not doing a whole lot. And that max skeleton spell is able to take out, you know, a level, I think that was level 30. I'm not sure. Probably level 30 queen, or at least a, a high level queen uh, by itself, even with there's a few other point defense in the area. So worked out awesome. Now, I like how he dropped the skeleton spell towards the end when other defenses were down, the archer towers were distracted. If he dropped it right at the beginning, then every defense in the area is focused in on those skeletons. Probably wouldn't have gotten the job done. Sometimes you have to wait to the heat of battle when defenses are either down or distracted uh, to drop down that skeleton spell and make sure that there's nothing in the area that's going to be too deadly for those skeletons. Last attack, this one is Ali. And uh, a few more skeleton spell action, uh, has a witch, a lot of different stuff going on in this attack. Um, I like this, I think he knew there was a golem in the CC, yeah he had to have known. Uh, just lures that out with a barbarian, then uses a witch to basically occupy it for pretty much the entire attack. This is something you can do uh, whenever there's a golem in the CC and it's very easily lurable. Drop down the you know a few barbarians just to distract it. Then drop down a witch. The witch can spawn ske uh, skeletons fast enough so that the uh, the golem will be distracted pretty much the entire attack. Um, ev eventually it will bust, and sometimes it'll get up there and take out the witch. The golemites will because the explosion kills the skeletons. Uh, sometimes it depends, but by then it doesn't matter. The golemites are an issue anyway. So takes that golem out of the equation. Comes in with the uh, the queen, the healers. Uh, takes out that air defense, which makes it easy to do a queen walk without ha having to worry about your healers getting shot down. Uh, the queen will take out that storage, step up, get that cannon, and then continue on her walk. Right there, the golemites split. I think they might get in there and take out the witch. Um, but at this point, like I said, doesn't matter a whole lot. There's the jump uh, for the king. The funnel is very uh, nicely created. Has a few pekkas working in there. Yeah, two pekkas. Has a jump and a rage. That jump was just to get everything into the first layer of the base. From there, he kind of trusts that they'll make their way through the base, take out walls if they need to. Um, has these rages for the for the kill squad. Um, or not, I guess the kill squad is the entire attack. Has the rages for everything. And there's the skeleton spells right on that queen. I think he didn't want the queen to be too much of a distraction. Now she does end up pulling like all his troops towards the bottom here. So that actually didn't work out as well. But the queen herself is still in the middle of the base with the healers. And uh, um, she'll be able to take out a lot of these defenses on her own. So it still works out okay. But I like the skeleton spells. I like the idea. Especially because the golem in the CC, he doesn't need the poison. I think a lot of the time people have to start thinking, you know, is the poison worth it over a, skele a skeleton spell? You know, if you have a baby dragon, minion, stuff like that in the CC, yeah, you might want to poison them. But if you have a golem, a lava hound, uh, even, you know, balloons in certain circumstances, if it's easy to take those out, 
um, or something similar that doesn't need a poison spell necessarily, think about bringing the skeleton spell instead and how you can get value for that. And uh, it might be able to be pretty effective in your attack. So look at how many troops he has left up, ton of P.E.K.K.A.s, Valks, everything, the, the heroes. Like I said, when you use this strategy correctly with the P.E.K.K.A.s, the Valks, the healers, the rages, uh, and the bowlers, that's a lot of damage and it can work very well for you. So that's it. Um, I've been talking for quite a while. Uh, hope you guys liked the video. Definitely a fun war to be in, even if it wasn't a win. Uh, but yeah, guys, we're looking forward to our next CWL matchup. Hopefully we can bounce back. It's a very long season, so, uh, you know, one loss isn't going to hurt us. we got to just re um, rebound and be able to, uh, to pull off the victory next week, which you guys will definitely see. I should be covering pretty much every week the CWL war uh, because that's what it looks like is going to be in our schedule for the next few months. So thanks for watching. I'll see you guys later. Bye. Sack the Tron out.